Welcome back again, in Anime Galaxy. The story starts with our main man Kai checking out this girl all chained up, and he wonders if she is a demon or an angel. This girl straight up asks him for help, but Kai can't even believe she's looking to a human for help. Humans and other races have been going at it, like a hardcore war. But this girl, she ain't got a clue about that, and Kai's getting mad and frustrated because it's like nobody remembers what the real world's about. So, we flash back, and peep Kai doing his usual thing, keeping an eye on a graveyard. His homies want him to hurry up, but Kai takes this shit real serious. In this world, there's five races, the demons, with their crazy magic powers, the celestials, who are demi-humans such as angels and elves, the spirits, who are creatures that possess special kinds of bodies, such as ghosts. There are also the mythical beasts, that are huge ass monsters like dragons. And then of course, you got the humans. These five races have been at war, and it's hella important to make sure we don't end up in another great war. Kai's part of the Urza Federation, and they got the job of watching over the graveyard where the demons had been sealed. Kai keeps an eye on that graveyard for 300 seconds, like always, and he figures out ain't nothing funky going on. The demons are still sealed up tight no doubt. Kai's co-worker Aslan can't get why Kai's taking his job so damn seriously, but Saki points out that it's good for them because they can take it easy. Ain't been no demon breaking free from that seal in a whole century, but Kai reminds his crew that it's still their job. There's four graveyards around the world, and Kai points out the folks in charge, they are taking their jobs just as serious. And that's because if a demon was to bust out, it would be straight up chaos. Kai's peeps wish he'd take it easy because it's been a while since a demon broke free, but Kai ain't letting his guard down. He declares that watching over that graveyard is his duty. Sometime later, we see Kai training hard. But they warned his ass, being a low-rank soldier and messing with a mythical beast for training, that's some next-level danger. But Kai doesn't give a damn, he fights it anyway. Turns out his attacks don't do jack shit against that beast. Saki gets worried so she shut off the hologram, and she's wishing Kai wouldn't push himself so damn far. But Kai thinks training would be pointless if he ain't risking it all. Saki actually admires Kai's determination. She thinks if he was around during the Great War, his name would be straight up legendary, like that prophet named Sid. But Kai can't see himself winning against those four heroes like Sid did. Saki breaks down each hero from the four races, and she can't even imagine what they would have done if they were still kicking it. Luckily, Prophet Sid was able to take them down using the shining sword given by some god named Salaka. There's mad proof that the four heroes existed, but there ain't no evidence of this Prophet Sid. There are no pictures or videos or nothing. Saki switches the topic because their friend Jean's getting promoted, and she wants to throw down a celebration. Jean's getting transferred to headquarters at just 17, making her the youngest person ever chosen. She's a freaking elite among elites, so they gotta hook her up with more than just a bouquet, like Aslan suggested. Right then, Kai gets a message from Jean, and Aslan reads it out loud. Jean wants to meet up with Kai, but she wants them to keep it on the low from Saki and Aslan. Kai tries to play it off, saying the message ain't really from Jean, but it's too late, and Aslan's wondering if Kai got some secret thing going on with Jean. They try to dig for more info, but Kai just decided to go for a run. Next morning, Kai meets up with Jean, and he's glad she actually showed up on time because she is usually late as hell. She wonders why Kai is all dressed up when he is off duty, so he explains he just came from his morning self-training, something he does every damn day. Jean wants him to roll with her while she goes gift shopping, and she says she looking for presents for Saki and Aslan. She knows they planning to get her something, so she wanna give them something back. Jean says she probably won't see them again, but Kai assures her she gonna be back as a cadet after her transfer, in like two years. Jean predicting that by then, Saki and Aslan gonna be done with their military service and living civilian life. Only she and Kai gonna still be in the military grind. Kai's totally on board with her, but he can tell she's upset. He knows what's wrong and reassures her not to stress, because he's damn sure she's gonna outshine her dad, the big boss at Urza headquarters. They keep having a blast, but Kai ain't paying much mind to Jean's shopping because he's hunting for something for himself. At the end, Jean gives mad props to Kai for helping her score some sick gifts. Then they start chatting about how Jean's dad took Kai to check out the graveyard back when he was just a 10-year-old. Kai wandered into that graveyard, and when he came back, he was telling everyone about laying eyes on Sid's sword. Kai's got a vivid memory of what it was like in that graveyard, and how he almost got his hands on the shining sword. That day, Kai started preaching about how crucial it is to keep the demons locked tight in the graveyard. Jean wonders where they gonna be in the future, but Kai points out that she will simply be back in two years. But that ain't what she's getting at, because she talking about what comes after. Jean wants them to make a promise for the future, but Kai starts freaking out because some weird shit starts going down. Jean is clueless about why he's acting all strange, and now Kai's wondering if he's the only one seeing this crazy stuff. Jean keeps chatting like nothing weird's happening, but Kai's straight up horrified as she gets sucked into a black hole. 
Then out of nowhere, a mysterious voice announces that the world's reincarnating and it's time to overhaul the whole damn thing. Few moments later, Kai snaps back, but finds himself in a dark and messed up world. Then shit gets real when a gigantic and terrifying demon pops up right in front of him. This beast unleashes some insane magic attack on Kai, and he barely survives by using his sword case as a shield. Kai can't even wrap his head around the fact that a legit demon's standing there, getting ready to unleash another hellish attack. Kai rushes to his sword and swiftly loads it up with bullets. His weapon's versatile because he can shoot bullets and cancel out the dragon's magic. The dragon can actually talk, and it's blown away by Kai's cancellation skills. Kai breaks it down, saying he used some modified elven bullets crafted with elven magic. But the demon just keeps coming at him, and Kai ain't phased one bit. He closes the gap between him and the demon, showing off his insane fearlessness. Kai's sword can't pierce the demon's skin, but he takes advantage and lets off a shot up close and personal. Exhausted as hell, Kai explains that the bullet he just used is a modified drake bullet that mimics the breath of mythical beasts. It's his first time using it, but Kai's stoked to see that he's moving just like he does in training. He's feeling hella confident now that he knows he can actually take on real-life demons. Just then another demon shows up and starts talking smack about how it's laughable for a human to think it can take down demons. Kai's impressed by how well this demon speaks English, but the demon explains that the most effective way to control a slave is by using its own language. Kai's clueless about why the demon's calling him a slave, but there's no time for thinking. The demon says Kai smells dangerous, so it's ready to wipe him out. Just when things look grim, someone saves Kai with a flashbang, and they bounce. This girl tells her crew that they've got the wanderer secured and she needs to know where Kai's from. Kai's shocked to see that this girl is Saki, but she ain't got a clue who he is or how he knows her name. Kai reminds her they're friends, but she swears she's never seen him before, and neither has Aslan. Kai can't wrap his head around why they don't remember him, so he reminds them they're from the same agency. They look at him like he's speaking gibberish and explain they're just soldiers in the resistance. Now Kai's the one feeling lost and confused, so Saki starts spilling that they're with the human rebel army. This just causes more confusion to him, so he asks them to tell him everything about this world. Aslan and Saki think he's all messed up from facing a demon, assuming he's forgotten stuff. They try to help him remember, explaining there was a huge war between the five races, and humanity ended up on the losing side. Kai is shocked of course, because in his world humanity actually won. Aslan goes on to say that they lost the war over 30 years ago, and the other four races took over cities worldwide. And damn humans are struggling to survive, running, and hiding like there's no tomorrow. The world's now ruled by the other races, and they stay fighting each other for turf. Aslan and Saki introduce Kai to Neo Vashil, the human city. A group of humans snagged an underground spot that was still intact and flipped it into an underground city. The resistance holds it down, protecting the folks living there by going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other races. Kai wonders how the hell humans lost the Great War, but Aslan and Saki don't even gotta say it, it's pretty damn obvious. They point out how freaking powerful the demon he just saw was. They explain that they roll up on humans in groups, leaving them no chance to beat them. And on top of that, each race got a boss they call a hero, and these heroes are some seriously strong individuals. All this sounds hella familiar to Kai, so he starts wondering what the hell happened to Prophet Sid, humanity's damn savior. Kai can't believe his ears when they say they never heard of Prophet Sid. He tells them that Sid's supposed to be the hero who hooked the other race's asses. Aslan hits the nail on the head, saying if they had someone like that, they wouldn't be living underground like they are. Just then, the main crew rolls up, and Aslan explains there are multiple human cities around the globe with resistance groups in each one, all overseen by the main core. The resistance commander is someone who saved countless lives, and Kai's jaw drops when he sees its gene, especially because everyone thinks she is a dude. Aslan and Saki introduce Kai to the commander, explaining his memory's a bit foggy. Jean starts to leave, but Kai can't handle it all and stops her. He tries to jog Jean's memory about who he is and how they were just shopping a few minutes ago. Jean's clueless and assumes he's got her mixed up with someone else. Kai can't even comprehend that she straight up doesn't know who he is, so he straight up asks her why she fronting like a dude. Jean's hella shocked to hear that, and Kai reminds her about how she wanted to outshine her dad as his daughter. Some soldier named Fallon steps in and Jean decides to leave. Kai's new crew is worried about him, telling him to get some rest. That night Kai starts digging through some historical docks and realizes that the only records missing are the ones about himself and Prophet Sid. That's when it hits him, if Sid never existed and humans lost the Great War, then why the hell do the graveyards where the four races are sealed still exist? The next day, Kai asks Saki about the graveyards, but she's got no clue what he's talking about. Aslan lets Kai borrow the car, which pisses off Saki, but Aslan says it was just instinct. Kai pulls up to the graveyard and thinks about how it's his first solo trip, 
He's tripping out when he sees that the blockade stone is gone, so he enters. The darkness fades into light, and Kai's jaws drop when he lays eyes on the shining sword just chilling there. This straight up proves to him that the legends about Sid gotta be true. Kai grabs the sword from the mantle, and a loud voice hands him the world coordinate key, calling it the code holder. Suddenly, a massive shiny door opens in front of him, and Kai hears a girl screaming for help. Kai's mind is blown because he ain't in the graveyard no more, so he climbs up some big ass stairs. At the top, he sees a whole bunch of chains keeping just one girl locked up. Her wings look like a mix of demons and angels, and the hot girl begs Kai to set her free from those damn chains. Kai's all confused trying to figure out what the hell race this girl is. But then she tells him her name's Rinne, begging for him to save her one more time before passing the hell out. Kai's standing there, thinking if he should help her or not. See Kai hates demons, and this girl doesn't look like any demon. So even though he ain't too sure, he decides to set her free against his better judgment. He grabs his sword and tries to slice the damn chains, but those chains are tough as nails. Ain't no damage happening at all. Next, he busts out his bullets, but even that ain't enough to break the chains. My man's losing hope because he ain't got no other weapons on him. But then it hits him, he's still got that special sword. He tries to remember what the hell it's called and shouts out code holder. And his gun sword starts transforming into this golden code holder thing. Kai can't even believe he's holding the same sword Sid used to save humanity in his timeline. He raises that badass sword and takes another swing at the chains. For a hot second, it looks like he just wrecked the whole damn dimension. But shit goes back to normal, and the chains are sliced clean in half. The girl's freed and starts falling to the ground, so Kai catches her. As soon as she opens her eyes, she freaks out and flies away from him, screaming for some chick named Vanessa to come out. She says that she wants a rematch with Vanessa, and ain't fair for her to send some weak-ass demon to try and kill her. But before Kai can explain that he ain't a demon, Rin is already launching attacks at him because she hates demons. He manages to dodge the first attack like a boss, but he can't escape the second energy blast she throws his way and now he's starting to regret helping her. But just as that blast's about to hit him square in the face, he remembers something the system mentioned about the code holder being able to break fate itself. So he grabs that code holder and slashes that magic ball in half. The magic disappears, leaving Kai and Rinne both shocked because no way in hell could a measly demon block her attack. Finally, Kai spills everything and tells her straight up that he ain't a demon. He asked her where the hell she even got that idea because he ain't has no wings or tail, so clearly he is just a damn human. Rinne realizes she messed up big time, so she apologizes for mistaking Kai for a demon and attacking him suddenly. But she has this deep hatred for demons, so whenever she sees one, it's all about that violence, no questions asked. Luckily, Kai hates demons too, so at least he knows for sure she ain't one. But he is still clueless about her race, so he asks her, but she pleads with him not to ask her about that. Kai agrees to drop the race talk for now, but he has other questions, like where the hell they at. But Rinna had no clue either, all she remembers is fighting Vanessa, and then she's suddenly stuck in this place. Kai recognizes the name and asks if it's the same Vanessa who's a hero to demons, and Rinne confirms it. That surprises Kai because Rinne picking fights with heroes and all. So he asks if she is really that strong, and Rinne proudly claims she could wipe out a whole damn army of demons if she felt like it. But she also admits that Kai's just as impressive because he managed to block her attacks. She is curious about how he pulled it off, so Kai is about to spill about his sword. But just then he peeps a portal behind Rinne, and out comes this ugly ass monster. The monster starts talking about some fate singularity entity waking up and how it's a major threat to the new world, so it's gonna start doing its thing to get rid of it. The monster tries to take out Rinne, but Kai swoops in and saves her at the last second. This monster has serious power, so Kai says he and Rinne have no choice but to run, and she agrees. So he grabs her hand, and they both dip. Unfortunately, they don't even know where the exit is, and that monster still got access to the portal. It reaches its nasty-ass tendril into the portal and snatches Rinne. Then it declares it captured the singularity and starts this termination protocol, forming orbs to erase Rinne from existence. Kai can't handle seeing that, so he decides to stop standing around and take action to save her. He busts out the golden sword again and slices that monster's tendril in half, wreaking havoc on the dimension in the process. The monster spots Kai and peeps that he's holding that forbidden sword. But it can't wrap its head around why the hell the sword's here or how a human like Kai got his hands on it. Now that Rin is free, Kai ain't sticking around to find out what the monster's planning. He grabs Rinne and jumps through that hole in the dimension, taking them back to the graveyard on Earth. Kai's a bit confused, but he's relieved they made it out in one piece. Rin is feeling hella relieved too because she was scared shitless she might kick the bucket. This is the first time anyone's ever given a damn about helping her out. Her whole life, all the other races have been telling her she ain't one of them. And the demons have been the cruelest, 
always calling her an abomination. That's why Rene got into that massive fight with Vanessa. Kai tries to comfort her, saying he knows how she feels because all his friends don't remember him no more. He feels like he's all alone in this messed up world. The history he remembers is one where humans won the Great War of the Five Races. But in this world, demons seem to be taking over the human cities. Rin is a little confused because she doesn't remember demons ever getting the upper hand against humans. In fact, around the time she fought with Vanessa, humans were starting to kick demon ass, and the demons were whining about it being because of the human hero. Kai gets all hyped and asks if Rinne remembers Sid, but she never got to meet him, so she can't say for sure. Kai realizes he might have overreacted, so he apologizes to Rinne. But at least they know they come from the same past, so they gotta be connected somehow. Rinne gets close to Kai and says he's the first person to ever stand by her side, and that shit makes her hella happy. A little while later, they bounce from the graveyard. Rene asks Kai what he plans on doing now, but before he can answer, Rene collapses from exhaustion. Kai's worried and figures it's because of that attack she took earlier. So he helps her up and says he's gonna head back to the city, and since she has no place to go, he invites her to stay with him while they're there. Rene ain't too sure about rolling to a human city because she doesn't trust people like that. So Kai asks her why, and she says she can't trust anyone except him because he saved her ass. He tells her she should trust that he'll keep her safe and asks her again to come with him. He lets her know she can bounce if she ain't feeling it, no hard feelings. So in the end Rinne agrees to go with him. Back in Kai's house, dude's lying on his bed while Rinne is taking a shower, and he deadass exhausted from the drive back home. Rinne had never been in a car before, so she was freaking out the whole time and nearly making him crash left and right. Lucky for her, she hid her wings, so once they got here, nobody could tell she ain't human. But her weird behavior still got folks on edge. She even tried to throw down with some magic at one point, and Kai had to hold her back. But he gets why she is so cautious because she is around a bunch of strangers. Then Kai's attention turns to his sword. He ain't even noticed when it went back to normal, so he grabs it and is about to say code holder to see if he transforms again. But before he can do that, Rene comes running out of the shower begging for help because she can't figure out how to turn off the damn water. Kai tells her he'll help, but for now, he can't look because she ain't wearing any clothes. Once the shower's off, Rene gets dressed and starts talking about how humans got all the good shit. Even with their messed up society, they still got that warm ass water to shower with, while Rinne had to bathe in a damn waterfall. And also humans got the soft beds too. But on the surface, everything's destroyed. So she finally gets that Kai wasn't messing around when he said demons took over the city. Kai had his doubts at first, but meeting Rinne confirmed he ain't losing his mind. Now he knows for sure they are in a world where the race war results got messed up. The real history is the one where Sid became the human hero. But in this reality, dude never existed for some reason. Rinne suggests they gotta find a way to escape this reality and get back to the old one. That's the solution to their problem. But Kai doesn't know if there's actually a way to make that happen. They hit the bed after that, but late in the night, Rinne jolts awake and warns Kai about some strong ass magic vibes, meaning the demons are launching an attack. Outside, the demons just busted through the city's ceiling and going on a rampage. Kai already knew humanity was screwed in this messed up reality, but he didn't realize how damn helpless humans were against demons. Ain't no hero around to save them either. So Kai decides he gotta step up and take Sid's place for the sake of humanity. The defense units start blasting bullets at the demons, but they know the little bullets ain't gonna do shit. So Saki darts off to grab the machine gun, but right before she gets to it, a demon rolls up behind her, about to cast a spell. But at the last damn second, Kai jumps in and saves her, knocking that demon to the floor. He tells Saki to use water against the demons because if they soak that shit up, they'll get too heavy to fly. And once they grounded, she should toss some grenades their way. Just then, Kai notices a demon turning Aslan into a freaking stone. So he fires an anti-magic bullet to break the spell and save his life. The demon then sets its sights on Kai, trying to pin him down, while another demon sneaks up from behind to attack. But Kai slips past that sucker and shoves the first demon away, while Rinne takes care of the second one with a blast. Afterward, Kai thanks Rinne for the backup and gives her props for her strength. But even with her badass power, he ain't sure if they can save the city on their own. Aslan and Saki come running up to Kai, asking him how the hell he's destroying magic with bullets and knocking demons around with his fists. Kai breaks it down for them, explaining that he comes from a world where humanity won the race war. His fighting style and special bullets all come from that world. But Saki and Aslan still ain't buying Kai as talk about alternate timelines. 
But before they can ask more questions, Aslan gets a message saying two demon scouts got away. And if the scouts report back to their leader about this underground city's location, a whole damn army of demons gonna swarm in and wipe out every last human. Aslan says he gotta report this to the rebel army headquarters. And Saki asks Kai to come with them because his strength makes him a valuable asset. So Jean gonna welcome him for sure. Kai agrees to join them, and they all head to the headquarters in the old royal capital. That place got wrecked years ago, but that's exactly why they chose to set up their headquarters there. Demons ain't gonna think of searching for them in a destroyed place. The one who came up with the idea was Jean's dad, but he retired as the head of the rebel army two years ago because of an injury, so Jean took his spot. They roll up at headquarters, and both Kai and Rinne get brought in to meet Jean. She already got the reports from Aslan, so she asks Kai to spill about this alternate timeline he mentioned earlier. Kai spills on all he knows, but the other big shots in the room call him a liar for dropping such a ballsy claim. But Kai brings up how he and Jean were tight as kids in the previous timeline. He mentions Augustin Gurr, the nicknames Jean always wanted to be like. The names catch Jean's ear, but she keeps quiet for now and decides to wrap up the meeting. Later that night, Jean wants to link up with Kai. Seems like she's starting to be a bit more open to the idea that Kai might have been spitting the truth. Not many folks in this world know she's a woman, and August and Gur were her dad and grandpa's nicknames. But that doesn't mean she believes every damn word he said. Still, she thinks his fighting skills and knowledge can be trusted. She lays out a plan to link up with other human cities and push back the demons planning to invade Neo Vashel. But Rene ain't feeling it. She thinks that plan's just gonna attract more and more demons as time goes on. Plus, if some high-ranking demon shows up, the whole thing's gonna go to shit. Jean knows it's a risky move, but she can't think of nothing better to protect the homes of the survivors. That's when Kai drops a bomb, he says they only gotta take down one demon to solve this mess, and that's Vanessa the hero of the demons. Jean thinks it's straight up crazy to even consider going up against a powerful demon like Vanessa, but Kai's confident that the code holder can handle her. He says he and Rinne gonna be the ones to go head to head with Vanessa. Demons are more focused on scraping with other races, so most of them won't be riding with Vanessa. All Kai needs is for Jean and her crew to hold off the rest of the demons while he goes to engage Vanessa. After Jean agrees, they waste no time and start prepping to take back the Urza Federation. The scene jumps to Kai and the crew gearing up for the big battle. Rinne is all fired up ranting about how much she hates different kinds of beings. She hates demons because they're shady and deceitful, spirits because they're creepy as hell, mythical beasts because they're straight up savage, celestials because they're stubborn as a mule, and humans because they're weak and fragile. But the kicker is, she hates herself the most because she's got a bit of all those traits in her. Despite all that, Kai's the only one who wasn't afraid of her, who saw her for who she really is and accepted her. She's really hoping he doesn't die on her. Then the scene shifts to the Urza Federation's army marching towards the government palace. Saki is in disbelief that their small squad is the one taking on Vanessa. She thinks the plan's got a shot because Jean is leading them, but she's still worried about going up against Vanessa. She questions what they're supposed to do with just the four of them, and Kai says a small squad is the key to reaching Vanessa quickly and unnoticed. Saki gets it, but she still isn't thrilled about being part of this risky plan. Kai then turns to Saki and Aslan, telling them they're the only ones he can trust to have his back. Saki's still pretty scared, but Rinne steps in and gives her a reassuring pat on the head, which calms her down a bit. Rinne tells Saki not to worry, reminding her that she's strong and won't lose to anyone except maybe Vanessa. Saki nervously asks what happens if they do run into Vanessa, and Rinne confidently says she'll handle Vanessa herself, even if it comes to blow herself up with her. Saki begs Rinne not to go through with such a dangerous plan, and Aslan chimes in, sharing his own worries. He points out that they have no idea what condition the government palace is in and fears the demons might spot them if they move in a big group. Kai reassures him, explaining that demons are sensitive to magic and won't notice them because humans don't have magic. Aslan feels a bit more at ease and wonders if Kai picked up this knowledge from his world. Kai observes that Aslan seems pretty calm but Aslan admits his hands are actually shaking. He adds that if they manage to defeat the demons, they'll be famous worldwide and might even get some rewards. Kai tells him that he's more reliable than the Aslan he used to know and says he's counting on him. They then arrive at their destination, ready for whatever comes next. Jean gives a speech to boost the morale of the soldiers. She knows some of them might be worried because of the short preparation time, but she reminds them how long they've been fighting. She tells them all that fighting was just the build-up for today. They've only been nurturing their spirit and will to fight for so long, but now it's time to strike back and make their voices heard. They head into the capital through an underground passage, and Kai is shocked to see the government palace in ruins. The demons patrolling the palace spot them and attack with ice magic. Kai dispels the magic with his bullet and takes out the demon with his sword. More demons show up, and Rinne uses her magic to wipe them all out at once, 
but Kai pretends one of his bullets did it. Aslan and Saki are surprised to see he has a bullet this powerful, and Kai tells them it's his strongest bullet. He then asks Rini if she can sense Vanessa, and she finds out Vanessa is on the top floor. Kai tells Jean he'll go look for the demon hero, starting with the top floor on the north side. Jean says she'll go with him part of the way, but Fallon informs them the stairs on the north side are collapsed, so they should use the ones on the south side. Jean understands and orders a group of soldiers to stay put and not let any demons into the government palace. She orders another group to rescue the prisoners from underground, and her group takes the emergency stairs on the south side. On the way, Fallon asks Kai about the lightning attack from earlier, realizing he wasn't responsible since she never saw him pull the trigger, and she figures out it was Rin as doing. Jean then asks Kai if he's still up for fighting Vanessa alone, and he says he is. She then informs him the demon should be gathering soon, and Rinna then notices an imp summoning a large demon on their way up. They're too late to stop it, and it summons the demon. The demon grabs one of the soldiers, but Fallon saves him, telling the others to go on ahead while she deals with this small fry. They leave her behind to handle the demon, and outside, the group of soldiers are also fighting some demons, and the second group saves the captives, and Jean and the others head into a room. Jean gets hit by a powerful lightning attack as soon as she walks in but she's totally fine. Rinna notices she's wearing an elven garment and Jean explains it's a magic item called the Sacred Light Garment, which they got from an elven village. Jean says this is the best thing for magic resistance. She tells them her forces will handle the demon and tells them to move on. Kai and his group move forward and put on some armbands. Saki is surprised to learn these armbands will keep them hidden from demons and wonders how they work. Rinna tries to explain it's barrier magic, but Kai warns her not to. Rinna says a human made it by copying angelic barrier magic. She explains it bends light to hide them, and they continue on. A demon approaches them, and Saki tries to attack, but Rinna stops her. The demon passes right by them without noticing. They're all relieved the barrier is working, and soon they reach the breaker room. They tell Saki and Aslan to stay there and cut the power if it looks like they're losing to Vanessa. Kai explains they'll use the dark to escape, and he'll send a signal when it's time. Kai and Rinna move on, but then they hear an alarm. Kai worries they've been found, but Rinna says her barrier should still be up, and Kai realizes it might be the building's infrared sensors. They keep going and spot some demons waiting for them. One demon says that human machines come in handy sometimes, revealing that the demons use the surveillance system to track them. Kai asks if this demon maintains the system, and he learns that Vanessa suggested using it. Since the slaves handle maintenance, it's hassle-free, and the demon hero is pleased with the invasion. The demon is curious why they'd risk a suicidal mission. Kai asks him to lead them to Vanessa, but the demon says he'll use them for his own amusement. He and the other demons then attack Kai, but Rinna quickly flies him out of the way and takes him to the stairs leading to the next floor. She blocks off the demons and tells Kai to go ahead while she handles them. Kai isn't happy with this plan but has no choice, so he moves forward. The demons then catch the scent of every race coming from Rinne, and they're confused about what she is. Rinne says she doesn't know and admits she hates demons. Then she gets ready to attack them with her magic. Kai then finds Vanessa's room and is surprised to see that the demon hero is a hot succubus. We then cut to Jean battling the demon from earlier, with the others backing her up with gunfire. Jean tries to strike the demon, but he grabs her sword and attacks her with fire magic. Her elven garment protects her, and the demon realizes this. Jean's sword then transforms into a bow, and she uses it to take down the demon. Before dying, the demon notices that Jean is using angelic and elden magic items and warns her that these items will drain her life force because humans can't use magic properly. Jean finishes him off and says she chose death willingly. She explains that's the kind of resolve a human needs to defeat demons. Another demon drops down from above to attack Jean, but Fallon swoops in to save her. The demon recognizes Fallon and wonders if she's the Dragonar who wields a drake named Fong. Fallon denies it, and Jean hopes things are going well on the top floor. The scene shifts to the top floor, where Vanessa asks Kai if he's not surprised that the strongest demon is a succubus. Kai says he's not surprised at all, and Vanessa finds him interesting. She mentions she wanted to charm him into becoming her slave, but didn't expect his reaction. She asks if he's the commander who uses the elven garment, but Kai says he's not, he's just an outsider. Kai says he's from a world where she was defeated, but Vanessa tells him no such world exists. Kai doesn't care if she believes him or not, he explains he ended up in this world against his will and that, according to the history he remembers, the Great War of the Five Races ended years ago. Vanessa asks Kai which race managed to defeat her, and she's amused to find out it was the humans. She wants to know which human did it, and Kai tells her it was Sid. The name triggers some memories for Vanessa, but she quickly pushes them aside and tries to use her magic on Kai, but Kai cancels her spell. 
Kai then attacks, only to discover it's an illusion. Vanessa strikes from behind, but he dodges. She notices his weapon is unusual and realizes it must be from his old world. Kai asks if she believes him now, but she dismisses him as arrogant and hits him with a powerful flame spell. He deflects the attack, surprising her. Vanessa then unleashes a spell meant to destroy any race. The spell shakes the entire building, but Kai uses Code Holder to protect himself, leaving Vanessa amazed that he's still standing. Vanessa asks about the sword Kai is holding, but he doesn't answer. Suddenly, Rene hits Vanessa with a lightning spell. Kai sees that Rene is badly hurt from her earlier fight with the demons. She explains she got scared when the building shook, thinking Kai might be dead, so she came to check on him. Rene challenges Vanessa to fight her, but before she can, the monster from earlier appears through a portal and binds Vanessa. The monster notices strange changes in Vanessa and realizes she's been affected by the forbidden word. It tries to exorcise Vanessa from this world, but she manages to break free and recognizes the monster as one of Alfreya's servants. Vanessa retaliates with a powerful fire spell, severely injuring the monster, but it's still alive. The monster escapes through the portal to recover, and Kai is stunned by Vanessa's strength. He can't believe Rene was fighting someone this formidable. Rene admits that the Vanessa from her world wasn't this terrifying, and she's genuinely frightened by her power. Vanessa then tries to heal her injury by focusing her power, but it doesn't work, so she decides to prioritize dealing with Kai and Rene instead. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to let the world know about our love for anime.